Hey, what's up, yo? It's me, Morcho, but you can call me Morgan Beishi. And I wanted to make this video based upon something I've been meaning to review for a long time. A while back, I took a look at my AV Famicom, and even further than that, I did live streams playing my original Famicom back when I got my first ever drive. Which I don't know anymore, but we'll come back to that later. Today I want to take a look at something else that was Famicom related and got me into retro import gaming quite a long time ago. The Famicom Disk System. Ooh. The Famicom Disk System. Hey! That's our running gag. It's sorry, won't happen again. Ah, it's fine. Anyway. In this video, I'm not just going to take a look at the Famicom Disk System itself, but I'm also going to be reviewing some games that I own on the Famicom System, and a few more that I couldn't get time for this video. So instead, I'll be playing them from my EverDrive. But before I do, I want to point out something first. No, I'm not capturing these through an emulator since... Well, it just doesn't feel right. And no, I'm not capturing this footage from the original Famicom since the original video quality through the RF adapter going on my VCR is... Crap. Instead, I decided to use my AV Famicom going to my RetroTINK 5X, which is going to my capture card, obviously. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, want to listen to some Famicom Disk System ASMR? The first game we're going to talk about is Super Mario Brothers. There was also a cartridge version which I also own, but there's a difference between the two. For those who don't know, there's a secret glitch that allows you to enter the Minus Worlds. If you go to World 1-2, you'll have to break a couple of bricks near the last warp pipe and make an art-shaped backwards jump while crouching towards the left. If you succeed and enter the first warp pipe before the warp zone text appears, you'll be greeted to the Minus One World. In the cartridge version, it's just the infamous loop that's just a broken duplicate of World 2-2. But, in the disk system version, it's not just a single loop, it's its own world with three levels! Minus 1 being a broken duplicate of 1-3, minus 2 being a fixed duplicate of 2-3, and lastly, minus 3 being another broken duplicate, but this time of World 4-4. And if you beat the last Minus World, you unlock the Super Mode, which replaces the Goombas with Fuzzy Beetles. This can also be achieved by beating the game properly, but aside from all that Minus World talk, it's pretty much the same as the cartridge version. And no, the ending music track from the Lost Levels isn't here in the Disk System version. Speaking of Lost Levels, I have Super Mario Bros. 2 on the other side of my Super Mario Bros. disc. And unlike the first game, there are some graphical differences as well as a new mode where you play as Luigi with less traction and higher jumping. Oh yeah, there's no two-player mode. But can I just say something? This game is hard AF! Assuming you know what that means, but if you don't, AF usually means... is frick. So it's like I'm saying this game is... well, I think you know by now. The farthest I have gotten in this game, without any continues, was up to 3-4 when playing as Mario. But with Luigi, I can go only as far as 2-2. Oh, because I missed that freaking jump! You know what? Screw it! Next game! This is Versus Excite Bike, a game that's pretty much a remaster of the NES game that came before it. Alright, let's press start and get started already. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one thing. Some Disk System games require you to switch between sides. That is, if the game itself is on both sides. And I gotta say, this game is actually really good. Basically, you play as this motorcyclist and race across a bunch of racetracks. First, there's a qualifying level, and then there's the actual level for each track you play on. There's also a versus mode, hence the name Versus Excite Bike. Which I couldn't demonstrate, and also the track editor is much more improved over the NES game. It's a shame it never came out in the States, but hey, if you ever have a disc system yourself, this game is worth it. Trust me. Alright, let's move on now. Up next we got Famicom 3D Hot Rally. This was a sequel to another game on a disc system, but that wasn't as great. But we'll probably get to that another time. Or not. Fun fact, this game came on a blue disc 
with a shutter, while other Famicom Disk System games came on yellow discs instead. Heck, some games came on pink di- Oh, no, wait, that was a disc checker software, never mind. Anyway, coming back to Famicom 3D Hot Rally, this game is actually very unique, almost like a precursor to the Mario Kart series. Coming into the gameplay, you have a choice of three cars and three racetracks. When you pick your car and the racetrack you want to, you know, race on, you'll have to try to get through as many checkpoints as possible until the end of the racetrack. If you don't, it's game over. And also, if you collect eight of these H things, you'll unlock this hot mode which makes you go SUPER SPEEDS! Overall, this game is one of the best on the disc system, and, best of all, this game is compatible with the Famicom 3E system. Which I couldn't get in time in this video, but, oh well. Maybe I'll review this thing another time. Next game. Next up we got, uh, I can't read it. Hang on! Ah, okay. This game is called The Mysterious Murasame Castle, a game where I'm assuming you play as this samurai warrior who... Well, I couldn't figure that out yet. But I'm sure if I play this long enough, I'll find out soon enough. Overall, this game is pretty easy. Some of the ninja enemies are easy to defeat, while others are... a little pumped to the extreme. If that makes sense. It's sort of like a Zelda-esque game. In fact, the screen layout is pretty much the same as the first Legend of Zelda game, which we'll cover later in the video. Aside from that, this game is great. Moving on now. Okay, remember when I said earlier in the video that I don't own my first ever drive anymore? Well, the reason for that was so I can upgrade to the N8 Pro. And one of the many perks of owning an EverDrive was that you could play your disk system games without the need of the disk system itself, which is actually convenient if you're playing your Famicom on a super small entertainment center. Or you could just play your games on a twin Famicom. Anyway, going back to the EverDrive, since I've gone through all the games I own physically on the disk system, let's move on to a couple fan favorites on disk system that I couldn't get in time for this video. Nintendo's lawyers might come after me, so to prevent that, I'm just gonna say this. Don't. Pirate. Video games. Unless you have good reason. Anyway, aside from that, let's move on. This is The Legend of Zelda, and just like the first Super Mario Brothers, there was also a cartridge version. Which I don't own, but I do own the same game on the 3DS and Wii U's Virtual Console. Anyway, getting into the gameplay, you start off playing as Link and you have to rescue Princess Zelda and save the Kingdom of Hyrule while defeating the evil wizard Ganon. But before you do that, there's a bunch of stuff you need to do first, such as getting the rings and the extra swords and all that stuff. But aside from that, this game's really good. I've actually beaten this game before, which took me more than a week and probably longer if YouTube hadn't existed. But regardless, I've enjoyed this game and I'm glad I got to review it. Alright, last game, here we go. Saving the best for last, it's Metroid. A game that's pretty decent, actually. But kind of hard to get through. Anyway, in this game you play as a bounty hunter named Samus and have to find and defeat the pterodactyl-like monster named Ridley. I didn't know where I was going when I played this game, but hey, at least I got a few items for my personal save when I was recording the footage. But in all honesty, I could never figure this game out. If anyone has like a guide or map of some kind for the OG Metroid, let me know in the comments. Thanks. Oh yeah, by the way, Samus is a woman. Alright, I think that about wraps it up for now. There are a few other games I wanted to cover for this video, but unfortunately I couldn't in time, such as Kid Icarus, Doki Doki Panic, which is just the American Super Mario Bros. 2, as well as Kamen Rider Black, which, as a Kamen Rider fan myself, maybe I'll review this game in like a part two or something, I don't know. But aside from that, I think that's gonna be enough for now. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you would like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell if you like, and that's all there is to it, so goodbye.